If I was to say that you could get a modern operating system on a single 1.4 megabyte floppy disk, you'd probably think I was absolutely insane. Because even by the late 80s, DOS came on more than one floppy disk. I think it required a few for installation, and uh, certainly by the early 90s, it was definitely on about seven floppy disks. And then you had the graphical desktops like Windows 3.1 and 95 coming around, and they required quite a few floppy disks. But no, here we have a graphical desktop, something that has a few games, and it being a, an operating system on a 1.4 megabyte floppy disk. Okay, we'll look at it in VirtualBox, and part of the joys of getting it going in VirtualBox is that uh, I have to have an existing Linux installation and uh, in order to sort of tweak things and get it on there. Anyway, uh, it was quite frustrating that. And, but there was an instruction guide on there, so it wasn't too bad in the end. But there you go. It's pretty damn quick at booting up. I would say that without all those questions on there, it's, it's probably about four or five seconds. That's good going. And here it is, a desktop with uh, got a few different icons there. Got a menu on the bottom left hand side. Okay, well it's not running 100% successfully because I, I just can't get the network card working properly here. I think I might be having some difficulty understanding the settings here in the config file. And it doesn't help I can't get like a terminal window open and just to try and ping another server on the network just to you know, try and understand what's going on. So that's the config file I need to edit. And it even supports drag and drop and opening up another application that way. So, hey, that's quite good. Double clicking on the application title bar maximizes it. Oh, and also you can see it's got a nice transparency effect there. So these are the settings that you can control. And yeah, that's quite fun trying to edit these the way I've done this system. But anyway, I'm not going to bore you with the details there. The difficulty I'm having now is network IP. I think I've set it to what my network is, and that one should read that. But I can't get it working, so pass. What's the answer? It's got the capability to support a few different hardware items there. So you've got webcams, TV printers, some USB items. I'm not sure what that one is, though. Oh, the transparency. Anyway, I should have just opened it and I would have found out. It's got movie and audio players, but because I can't get on the network, I can't test this out. So that's really annoying. There's a couple of games you can download for the system there, Quake and Doom. But the games it comes with, well, okay, they're basic here, but ha, look at that. That's a 3D game. 3D maze. Use the mouse to move around. Uh, ooh, it's a bit tricky. It's a bit sensitive as well, actually. It didn't help. Go on, go forward. <laughs> it's like the old Wolfenstein game this, isn't it? That sort of style of graphics. I don't know what I've got to be aiming for though. That's oh I can't do it's like drunk driving this, isn't it? <laughs> Take a breath mint and uh, try and hold a steady line. Yeah, let's get out of that. Connect four. I still can't beat the computer. Damn thing. That's if you've got some games installed on the hard drive. And I said you've got to go and download those. We've got Minesweeper. Oh, oh damn it. <laughs> Never mind. Good old Minesweeper. We've got Duck Hunter. I forgot what you're supposed... I don't, not, I'm not sure what you're supposed to be shooting at in this game. You just seem to shoot at a few different things and then die. Oh, damn it. Go on. Ugh. You get the idea though. Yeah, yeah, game over. Sharp. <laughs> Under graphics, we've got draw, which is a bit like paint. Yeah, very nice. Pick view or picture viewer. The background, the webcam, DVD player, movie player, TV radio, and a variety of config files you can edit there as well. So the reason they can get this operating system so small is it's written in assembly language. And I've seen assembly language, and so that's about as far as I can get with it. Uh, it looks really difficult to understand, so respect to anyone who can program an assembly. It's just not for me. But programming this way, you cut out all the bloat. It's just a core, minimal programming the need to get this system working. And it comes in the 64 and 32-bit versions. And 
you can get a few different programs for it. It's not going to be anywhere near what you can get for any of the other operating systems like Windows, Linux, or Macintosh. I think it's like really a curiosity, an education piece, to say yes, you can get an operating system this small again. Ah, not initialized Ethernet card. Maybe that's my problem for networking. Do you know I could read up about this, but I just I could show you enough of the system now without spending a lot more time trying to get trying to get more things working. There you are, I've got a spreadsheet, a calculator, demos. Ah, this is quite a nice one. First things first though, and let me just open up the CPU usage. Now let's run the demos. So Mandelbrot. You can see the CPU usage going a bit mad when I do this one. Buddha brought. <laughs> yeah, it takes a little while to do that. Uh, it doesn't look like it's making maximum usage of my CPU there. So taking a look at some of these other demos here, got a, a 3D cross made out of dots rotating around, 3DS view, a teapot rotating in space, cool, 3D demo, go on in. What am I meant to do? It's like a racetrack. Just controlling it via the keyboard. Which is pretty cool. Our magnifier. Clock puts a clock on the desktop. Got a fire. And a 3D wormhole tube. So there you go, that's a preview of Minuit OS. That is impressive they managed to cram so much into such a small size. Thanks for watching, see you all later.